Welcome back to the PokerStars Players No Limit Hold'em Championship with huge apologies for what's happened over the last 30 minutes. A massive technical failure somewhere on the eastern seaboard which affected our internet connection and as a consequence took the stream down. We are picking up where we left off. This is the start of Hand 94. This is what you're watching when the stream went down. You have not missed any of the action. We will reduce the delay during the break. James Hartigan still with Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. I'm Maria Ho. Hi. So here we go. And I think you guys saw this once before. Max Menzel, pocket tens under the gun. This is great. We get a chance to do it over again in case we uh, messed it up. Joe, was there anything else you wanted to mention about this hand? Uh, I mean, under the gun open off of a 14 big blind stack, 15 big blind stack from Menzel, but a very big open. Pizarri still willing to go with the ace jack from the small blind. And so Pizarri all in. And as we can see, this will cost Menzel everything he has. There's just no getting away from this. No, I imagine when he opened versus open shoved, he was planning to go with it anyways. Oh. There's the call, and we are off to the races. Classic race underway at the final table. A race. The platinum pass winner, Max Menzel, has to win to survive. Like hard versus soft ice cream. And there is a tail on the floor. Looking good for Manzel. There are two spades. Let's not celebrate prematurely, guys. No spades. No spades. Manzel's been scolding his rail all day. Now they can cheer. Full house on the turn. That is going to be a double up for the Platinum Pass winner. Full house, full double. Max Menzel now playing a stack of 17 million. That means he's second in chips behind Alexander Shilko as Philippe Pizarri drops down to 23 big blinds and Nacho Barbero is still the shorty. With nine bigs, he is still in the danger zone. Danger zone! And again, Thank you so much for your patience, guys. I know that was very frustrating. It was incredibly stressful for us as well, trying to resolve issues that were beyond our control. But the stream is live again. And we have not missed any of the action. Yes, the delay is longer than it once was, but we can bend the time-space continuum. Every time the players take a break, we don't have to take a break. We call it dynamic delay. That means you just get back-to-back -back action and you're not going to miss anything happening at the final table of the PokerStars yeah, Players No Limit Hold'em Championship. Yeah. Frustrating for us, just like that 10 spiking was frustrating for Nacho. <laughs> Good point. Huge ladder we're looking at here. Better part of 400 grand. Yeah, and all eyes are going to be on Nacho, these other players waiting him out with the sub 10 bit line stack. He's running so bad right now, even the people he's rooting against are doing well. Uh, actually, three nine, yeah, three nine fifty. Left, three nine fifty, uh, no, five nine fifty. Thank you, Noah, and I would point out yeah, to everyone on YouTube that it's no one on the production team's fault. This is internet-related problems that we couldn't control, and obviously everyone worked incredibly hard to find a way to make it work and get the stream back. Um, I don't want to say anything particularly negative about where we are in the world, but it's not the easiest place to broadcast. From. It's an island. I don't even know how they get internet here in the first place. Is there a gigantic cable? Anyway, four players remaining, 24 minutes left on the level, one super short stack, and we continue to play down to a champion in the PSPC.
Shoko still in the power position. But I'm in the hand, okay, but. Everyone's saying, yes, there are cables the in the ocean. <laughs> well, that's the problem right there. They're all wet. <sighs> Can anybody think of that? I think we should be thinking of the fish that could potentially get caught in these cables. <laughs> I think most of them entered this tournament. So this is Mel Denzel versus Shilko. And it is top pair for Shilko, bottom pair for Menzel. Shilko going to look for some value and some protection for his top pair. Certainly can get called by, of course, 4X, 3X, which we see Menzel having straight draws, et cetera. Menzel with the backdoor flush draw to go with bottom pair. Menzel scolding his rail again. Now, I totally think you should go along with whatever your buddy's saying, right? It's his tournament. You're distracting him. However, as far as the room is concerned, they're fine. Yeah, as you mentioned, so I, I mean, we've all seen a lot worse behavior on the rail than this. This is pretty fun still. Oh, oh that's fun pretty fun. Card for Menzel. Yeah, makes trips on the turn and checks to Shilko. Now, Maria, there's a quite a few threes <laughs> in Menzel's range, oh, right? Stapes. Such a good time for a do-over for you on this one. I mean, <laughs> yes, this was a limped pot pre, so Menzel can have a lot of the offsuit combos that contain a three, not just the suited ones where, you know, if there were a raise pre-flop, then perhaps that would narrow a lot of those 3X combinations to just the suited ones. Here, not completely surprised to see Shilko go for another barrel here with eights and threes you could again get called by four x's and of course protect from some of those draws that are possible but gotta hear from oh. Menzel with this check raise shilko's bet was 1.4 million menzel's raise is to 6.2 million and just a quick reminder to anyone who's just rejoined the stream, you have not missed any of the action. We have picked up exactly where we left off. We are on an extended delay right now. We'll make up that time by removing the brakes. So this raise, if Shilko has this exact hand, this is one of the best case scenarios for this raise. Can this even withstand a raise this big? No, and I don't really think the five is a particularly good card to have because you block a lot of the likely draws in your opponent's range. You know, some of those straight draws all contain a five. And uh, really? just makes it less likely that your opponent Jack is semi-bluffing. Uh, now you're guessing, right? Now you're guessing. Nacho <laughs> is really grasping at straws here. <laughs> I folded Jack three. They're just like us. Wow, that is just the prettiest of all trophies. During our unintentional hiatus, I did leave the broadcast room to use the facilities and did bump into Max Menzel's rail in the toilets. Spoiler alert, they're very, very drunk soon. <laughs> if not incredibly drunk already. Do they offer you a Jaeger bomb? They did not. I'm guessing you encountered a lot of used beer in the bathroom. So, Menzel raising to a million with 10-3 suited. 
raise and take it. Menzel, second in chips right now, has more than 20 million. So he starts the day with what, around 20 big blinds? He was fifth in chips. And I think ever closing the gap on chip leader Alexander Shilko. I think everyone's taking turns being the shortest stack, maybe except for Shilko today. So for Menzel to be second with 40 big blinds is massive. <laughs> okay, somebody in the chat doesn't know the difference between a Jaeger bomb no, and thinking that I was calling right. Jaegermeister Jaeger bombs. Okay. There's four. a big difference. There's a big difference. Huge. Four, yeah, four oh my God, someone on the internet was wrong about something. <laughs> They're like, it's called Jaegermeister. I don't know how to do that voice, James. You have to teach me. <laughs> so, action folded around to the blinds and Philippe Pizzari is going to call in the small with 5-3 of hearts. Nacho Barbero has a dominating hand, 8-5 off, and he's going to check his option. Five tray, deuce, two pair for Pizzari, top pair for Barbero. This could spell the end for Nacho. Nacho. <laughs> e Barbero. Pizzari having a lot of the pairs covered with two pair here. Probably not going to just give Nacho credit for having a hand like top pair here, but there are a lot of draws possible. Nacho with only 2.45 million back after this bet. All in, and a call, here we go. Nacho Barbero, start of day chip leader, at risk and behind. Pizza versus Nacho, round four. Pizzari is a 75% favorite. Nacho Barbero needs a Nacho. No, it's my time. <laughs> Again, it would be, but he definitely needs it to be his time to survive this. I think a four. Yeah, a four would chop it. An ace would counterfeit Pizzari. Maybe the deck will show him some grace. No, it doesn't. And Nacho Barbero is eliminated in fourth place. He'll receive $1,551,300. And we have three players remaining in the PSPC. It's a bitter pill to swallow given where I mean, right Nacho the was to start the day last night. I don't think anyone would have predicted this. It's been a pretty tough day for Nacho. You know, some of his own doing and some not mm. but either way it's hard to not have higher expectations for your finish when you come into a once in a lifetime final table spot as the chip leader let's see why not just to see um, clock has been paused, and you may have heard the players discuss there that they are interested in looking at the numbers. As Nacho cashes out for 1.5 million, the remaining three players are open to discussing a deal. And at this point, we have another commentator who has a prior engagement. Maria, thank you so much. Of course. Thanks for having me. This is the exciting part. I'm sad to miss it. I will tune in right after. Thanks, Maria. So, Joe, we referenced earlier on that at the first PSPC, they played for it all. Yeah. They played for the advertised payouts. Now, Pretty even. considering how yeah, reasonably even the stacks are, less. and considering how relatively shallow they are, the final three are not less. averse to looking more. at the numbers. Yeah. Now, it doesn't mean that they will agree a deal, but Toby Stone and his laptop have been summoned to input the chip stacks and then provide
chip chop numbers mm -hmm. and ICM numbers. So the players can then debate whether they are interested in redistributing the prize pool. And again, we highlight that in any deal done in a PokerStars live event, it's done out in the open. They sign All right. to agree the payouts that they've discussed and come to. And also, there has to be money left to play for. 10% of the remaining prize pool after they've all taken third place prize money would have to be set aside. They would play for that and they would play for the title and trophy as well. You have to wonder if maybe just the way this final table has played out compared to the last time with their, everyone having been the short stack at one point, uh, a few people having been the chip leader at one point, you know, just seeing how easy it is to move back and forth up and down the leaderboard, that could play a factor as well. 100%. Well, Scott Baumstein, who was at the final table of the first PSPC in 2019, is with us right now in the booth. Uh, Scott, we've got so many people in chat saying, I'd never chop here. We're guaranteed nearly two million. Is this a spot where you'd be open to looking at the numbers? Absolutely, I'd be open to, to looking at the numbers here. I mean, this is just so much money. It's going to be, you know, obviously it's the biggest final table they've ever been to. It's probably will be the biggest final table of their lives. Having been in this spot four years ago, as you mentioned before, there was no chop, but I think one part that you're missing from that is, um, as I was present there, there was an extra million dollars on top there, and we were not allowed to deal mean. that million. So what that sort of stopped us from making a deal because that million dollars that was present last time was um, we weren't allowed to chop up. Now, now the situation is totally different. These guys are relatively even in chips. They're all probably relatively even in you know relative skill level as well. Making a deal here makes a ton of sense. Shilko, 52 big blinds. Menzel, 41 big blinds. Bizarri, 31. And we still have 14 minutes left on this blind level. That's another important thing to highlight, Scott, is that the blinds are going up inside a quarter of an hour, and it's going to become even shallower. And the shallower it gets, the more variance will play its part. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, these guys, their they're perceived edges uh, this shallow just aren't going to be gigantic just to lock up a little bit more money. No one's going to be upset about that. Also, you know, man, just like as you get to these bigger and bigger numbers, these marginal increases in money just sort of matter a little bit less. I think, yeah, I think, uh, I imagine they're probably going to arrive to some sort of a deal and play, you know, they're still going to be playing for, for the win and for several hundred thousand dollars that, that are left over. I mean, they're still going to have money on the side. And don't forget, Absolutely. Ramon ended up with a sponsorship deal out of it, too. So here are the payouts as they are advertised. The next player out stands to make 1.9 million, 2.5 million for the runner up and 4 million plus for the winner. So there is eight and a half million still in play at this now three handed final table. The tournament director, Toby Stone, will present the players with the numbers in just a moment. Meanwhile, a reminder that obviously we did suffer an internet outage. We did go down for 30 minutes, but you have not missed anything. We paused the stream, we paused the delay, and that means you're just catching up. We're catching up, I should say, on everything that's happened. And obviously it means that we now have an extended delay, which we can cut down every time the players take a break, which means back-to-back -back action. I'm excited there's still a Platinum Pass winner in the mix, too. That is a very good point. Max Menzel effectively free-rolling this event, having won a Platinum Pass at the PSPC Road to Manila event. Road to Manila. I hope they gave him the pass in an envelope. Yes, I guess so. If, if we'll ICM and just discard some, some amount of money to play for uh, second and third. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Sounds good, to me. Sounds good to me. That's interesting. Did you hear that? Yeah. What, what do you think? Alexander Shilko is aware of the rules that you have to have a set aside. He's saying yeah. that in addition for a set aside for the winner, they should also have a set aside for second. Yeah, that makes sense to me. So that, that, that it is something ladder. to play for, yeah. Yeah, so it's not exactly the same for, for second and third. So there's still this continual ladder of payouts here. Yeah. I'm trying to think, Joe, of all the deals we've seen. Never. Not it's once. always been a set aside so for the winner, but never nothing, have I seen this. Yeah, nothing put aside for second. I hope that becomes a trend, actually. Yeah, so we could just take one million, a million out. So also, this deal and means and these guys are going to see more interesting poker. You know, when there isn't the deal and they have these huge pay jumps, 
You know, you sort of have to play poker in a way that's pretty passive and, quite frankly, not as interesting to watch at home. I know you, you guys on the internet are saying, never make a deal, never make a deal, but when we're sitting at home watching this, these guys can, you know, play a little street right now, and I think the poker is going to be a little bit more interesting as we play down to a winner now that the money is going to be sort of set aside for the most part. Well, Toby's at the table. Sadly, we can't hear him. Yeah, yeah. Um, lastly, really, you need to play for 10% of the remaining, which means oh, okay. you'll get third place, and then once three third places is taken off the total prize money, and then 10% of the remaining. I have these numbers over here. So okay. Toby presenting the numbers. So everyone is effectively paid third place money. 1.9, 1.9, 1.9 okay. for all three. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. the remaining mm -hmm. prize money. Yep. Okay. And that's got where it. the 10% is deducted from. These are your names in the order of where you're sat. Yep. These are your chip stacks. It should be correct. Yes. And this is and, and it looks like they're going to be using the straight ICM numbers here that Toby's coming up with. to do like this, so it's going to be some price for second and for first, like additional. So we'll uh, like it's yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's going to be it's going to be more. Yeah. So more, more than this. You can redistribute the price. Okay. All right. So, right. so okay. go ahead. Go ahead. You do you yeah, Sounds like Toby's down. Deal. All right. You all understand this and agree with your chip stacks. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Show you the deal. Yeah, okay. So the chip stacks have already been put in. All right. This is chip chop, but don't be more than interest in chip chop. So there are two columns on Toby's spreadsheet. One is chip chop, which, as he said, no one's going to be interested in. But ICM, they will consider those numbers. Yeah. Everyone will be guaranteed at least two and a half million. I think the numbers I saw there were two and a half for Pizari, 2.7 for Menzel, and 2.9 for Shilko. I mean, feel good. Feels right, good. Well, I mean, they're going to be guaranteed okay. so second place one money, one and one then one additional money on top okay. of that so uh, if they get first or second. Would, so can we decide how we split the remaining ten percent? No, no, you have to play for that. No, so we for play example, for that, but yeah. how we split for this? It's, 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 we can do like two hundred for the first yeah. place and one hundred for the second. So we can discuss. Yeah. Okay. Love it. I mean, they seem pretty amenable. I think this is going to be a situation where we agree a deal because these guys seem up for it. Definitely looks like they're going to come. That's what we just said. We just said they're all suggesting the same thing. Yeah. But crucially, there's no one saying, "Well, you know, I've played ten million hands of heads up, so I want you to give me another five thousand. Yeah, I think they're they're going off of these straight ICM figures and and putting the the extra aside. No one's asking for more. What it looks like. Is it okay if I'll make a picture of it? Sure, you can take a picture of it. So it's the ICM col no, column M that, that we're looking at here. And with the 1 million out or with the 20 million? If my eyesight uh, no, is not like deceiving me, everyone will get at least second place prize money here. Yeah, Scott. Yeah, I mean, that's got to feel good. Plus the additional money that they're playing for, plus the win in the tournament. No one ever like won a tournament for a little bit less and was like disappointed that they chopped afterwards. But certainly there could be disappointment the other way if it doesn't work out. So based on what we saw, the numbers that they would get, Pizari, 2.5 million, Menzel, 2.75 million, and Shilko, 2.9 million. And the 300k set aside, the proposal was that 200k extra would go to the winner and 100k extra would go to second place. Right, so there's a situation that could occur that Shilko could not win the tournament and still make the most money here. What do you think, guys? Yeah. If he's to get in third. Or second, rather. Right, if I can help you in any way, just let me know. Uh-huh, okay, yeah. We, we two agree, and then we wait for him. Yeah. You you're both agree? So no, we think, I, we think I should do like this. 300 here. Mm -hmm. Not two seven seven, in front of the team. for first and hundred for second. For second. Do you want yeah. me to change the three hundred for you? Yes. yes. And you're gonna What's interesting is that Max Menzel and no Philippe Pizzari don't seem to be interested in discussing this with anyone, whereas I think Menzel does want to talk this over with a friend on the rail. Yeah, he's sort of taking it. It looks like he's taking it in right now, seeing what they so come to, and then maybe he's going to discuss it. For me, it's, it's good enough. I think this is a pretty solid deal. I mean, everyone guaranteed two and a half million with the potential to win more. Oh, Max looks like he just accepted it. He said, okay, 
And again, I know there are people who aren't fans of deals, and I completely appreciate that, but you have to bear in mind, if you do not facilitate deals at poker tournaments, they still happen. They happen behind the scenes. And Scott, I'm sure you've heard horror stories of where players have been screwed over. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm glad the trend has you know, changed in the last several years that sometimes the organizers didn't facilitate deals like this. I love that PokerStars Live, you, I think you guys were the first ones to really do it out in the open, you know, especially, and even covering this on the stream. It used to be something that was done like, on a handshake and the place wouldn't necessarily facilitate the payouts and would just still what pay. deal yeah they'd pay like what they were originally listed as and you were just you know hoping for the best but i think it's great that there's transparency in this that they're streaming the discussion about it and putting this out in the open i mean as there's absolutely nothing wrong with it it is something that should certainly be transparent and here we go deal agreed ladies and gentlemen yes they've shaken hands they're going to sign the paperwork and obviously we will play on. We are going to play down to a champion, but most of the prize money has been agreed and divided. Yeah, now, no matter what happens, any one of these three guys here is going to go home, go home happy without, without regret for sure. What a moment, realizing that you just made at least two and a half million dollars. Yeah, celebrate. Tell your friends and family. Buy something online before you get back to the table. And look, well, the, the sums they're still paying for, six-figure amounts. You know, an additional 100K if you can make it to second, additional 200K if you can make it to first, if you can win this thing. I would be on the phone right now to a local jet ski dealer, so they're waiting outside for me when the tournament's over. Invite me to the party, huh? Those things are a money pit. No, I would leave him here when I'm done. <laughs> Just give him the two kids on the beach. I mean, it was very clear from the start of the day. In fact, it's been clear from most of the late stages that these guys all get on. Obviously, it's competition, right? You want to beat the other guy, but there's no animosity. This is genuine camaraderie between these players. Presently. Yeah, I think the animosity is left already. This is a great moment. Max Menzel, the Platinum Pass winner, has locked up nearly $2.8 million. Fantastic. I can so easily picture myself just being that funny, hugging my friend. We so get it. Two Platinum Pass winners at the final table, just as we had back in 2019. We had one of them cash out for a million dollars. The other is still in contention for the title and trophy, has locked up at least 2.75 million. A lot of people just asking, again, how a deal works. Basically, the money that's in the prize pool, it belongs to the players. And they're allowed to divide it up however they like, as long as they agree, and they leave 10% of it to play for. <laughs> Typically, it gets divided based on what the stack sizes are. They use a, a formula called ICM for the most part. That's what's happened here. And they left 300,000 to play for. Whoever finishes second gets 100K more. Whoever finishes first gets 200K more. But everyone's locked up at least two and a half million dollars. So this is the deal that has been agreed. Philippe Pizzari locks up $2.5 million. Max Menzel, the Platinum Pass winner, guaranteed $2.75 million. And Alexander Shilko, who is the biggest stack right now, is guaranteed $2.9 million. Whoever finishes second will get an additional 100K, and the winner will get an additional 200K, and of course, will get to lift the PokerStars Players No Limit Hold'em Championship Trophy. I actually think Max got the best end of the deal here, even though we're using ICM numbers. The ICM sort of doesn't take into account that chip advantage that the big stack has, which is Shilko. And the person that could be most pressurized in that situation is the guy who's second in chips out of three people. So he's the guy who has to play a little bit more cautiously, trying to wait for the third place guy to go out. But now that they take the ICM numbers, he's getting a really good deal here. 
So back to the action, three-handed action, restarting with 15 minutes left on the clock at the 250-500 blind level, and then we will roll straight in to 300-600 with the 600K big blind ante. Threads up poker. And the first hand of three-handed play is hand 99. It's the flake. Twenty-five. <clears throat> you know, these guys are now going to be able to get it in a little bit more liberally. <laughs> they don't have to worry about these pay jumps. Like, like right here, they probably just get mm -hmm. it in. Nobody needs to fold their ace queen to a shove from the chip leader because they're waiting for the short stack to go bust. Yeah, we're twenty-three big blinds effective here, three-handed. These chips are going in the middle pre-flop. Surprising. Ace, five, deuce. Nobody's going to be folding. They're going to be chopping this pot, and all the chips will be in by the river. And a call. <laughs> so every suit represented. It's queen. Oh, I think we're going to have a <laughs> chopped pot here, Want to start, right? Yeah, want to start. I was like, sick. Well, for the purpose of completion, <laughs> after the three, three, <laughs> let's deal out the turn in <laughs> the river. And yes, you are not wrong, Scott. This is a chop pot. And you know what they say. Everyone loves a chop pot. Another couple of hands that we may have seen played cautiously. I don't think it's necessarily going to go all in here, but. Yeah, once once we make that deal and don't have to worry about ICM, I think this is a ace-jack suited from the small blind from, from a button open. I think is a pretty, pretty easy three bet in general there. I think we're willing to get it in for these stack sizes for the, uh, you know, 25 or so big blinds from the button open. Still playing very cautiously. Wow, quick check, check here. Wow, wasn't it all in? Okay, I was like, are we running the board? <laughs> uh, two pair now for Menzel. I like that check from Menzel in the turn because oftentimes his opponent is going to represent that ace. But it looks like he's happy to take his pocket threes down to show down here. There's now four hearts on the board. Threes might turn this hand into a bluff. I don't see ace-jack betting here. But then again. She'll go with 
still twice as many chips as Pizarri, who is the short stack, 25 big blinds. So I guess that leaves us with what, like 110 big blinds in play? No, 120? Yeah, about 120, 118. Menzel on the button, King-7 suited. Looks like there's gonna be a defend from Pizarri in the big blind. Pair of sevens for Menzel, gut shot for Pizarri. Two overs to that seven. Right, would have been a kind of hand we might have turned into a, a check raise on that flop if there was a bet. So when it goes check through on the flop, he is deciding to lead pretty big here with those two over cards to second pair and the gut shot to, to the nut straight. But we had a deceptive check back on the flock with our second pair top kicker. Pretty easy call here. Oh, he raises, excuse me, with his second pair and uh, denies him that equity. So, so out for him. Max Menzel is almost tied with Alexander Shilko for the chip lead. Out of nowhere, and I think he's peaking now for his tournament. Been seeing a lot of strong hands here, three three handed. So this suited ace nine on the button. We're seeing another ace from the small blind with a three bet. Wow, three strong hands here, but I think King Jack offsuit is going to get away from it in the big blind. And ace nine suited is a good hand here to put the four oh, bet dunk in. He might be able to just jam here. Nine, it's hard for him to call and play this hand with his playability, but it has a lot of raw value. It has blockers, it's suited. I mean, including the bet, right? Yeah, it's including that. I don't imagine he's going to fold. He's going to call or go all in here. Wow, that is a very no, tight more. fold in this format. When you're opening ace nine suited Six. on the button, it is one of your Seven. stronger hands. You've also Eight. made this deal so that should alleviate Nine. some of the pressure yeah, yeah. and therefore yeah, allow yeah. your opponent yeah. to be yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, bluffing sorry. there more often. Hold ace it. nine suited is pretty strong Hold there with from your button opens. It's going to be one of your stronger hands. of hands we've been seeing three-handed. Now we get the ace-queen suited. <laughs> Running into the ace-eight in the big line. Probably just a call here, but could be raised as well. bet and call here a lot. Surprising that it was checked to him. His ace eight here is gonna be good here a fair amount, but if he bets and gets called, it's gonna be beat a lot of the time. 
now AC picks up a lot of equity with the open ender on the turn. Shilko still a three to one dog though as Menzel checks the turn. Now it might be a good time for him to put in a bet, get him, get him to fold out some of those bigger ace highs, maybe some of those small pairs. You can get hands like ace jack, ace queen, ace king to fold here with a bet. I think at this point, it looks like both of these guys are going to be happy enough to take the, their hands to showdown. And that will see Max Menzel win another hand, and that will see Max Menzel take the top spot on the leaderboard. The Platinum Pass winner is chip leader with 26 million. Alexander Shilko, second in chips with 22 million. And Philippe Pizzari is the shortest stack of the final three with 12.6 million. be quite something if both iterations of the PSPC, both editions in 2019 and 2023, were won by a Platinum Pass winner. It would be, but to be fair, about 40% of the field were Platinum Pass winners. <laughs> Looks like the the deck was trying to get these guys' heads up really quickly here, but these guys are continuing to play pretty cautiously. Which some people might find counterintuitive, Scott. There'll be a lot of people watching saying, hold on a second, you've chopped up most of the prize money. Um, I think one person watching on YouTube described it as, you're playing for pennies on the dollar now. And yet, obviously, they're still playing quite seriously. Well, They're not taking any risks. They're not right. opening up their games that much. Yeah, it is surprising. Generally, when people do make deals, that does happen a lot. They sort of get it in very quickly after that and sort of don't really care as much. But these guys are taking it seriously. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that not only is that trophy pretty stunning, but this is a title that oh, absolutely. has huge significance and could, as Joe alluded to, with what happened with Ramon after his win in the PSPC, could change your life. Right, there's a great amount of prestige with this, along with this title. Who knows, maybe you end up representing poker stars afterwards. Yeah. I mean, some people asking how much the trophy is worth. I'd be disappointed if it's made its way onto eBay. Barry Greenstein makes an appearance. The ace on the river gives Shilko the advantage. I have to bet that ace here. How big does he want to go? Not very big, less than half pot. <laughs> Quick call. So Pizarro drops down to 20 big blinds as Shilko narrows the gap between himself and Max Menzel. Blinds going up inside of a minute. One thing I would highlight is that with three players remaining and a deal agreed, the blind levels will shorten. So the next level and all subsequent levels will be 30 rather than 60 minutes. We're going to make sure we're going to get to that party tonight. Also, we've got to get all this stuff on a boat. It's got to go back to Europe. We've got Paris in a couple of weeks. Eight, seven of diamonds for Shilko. A seven of hearts for Pizarri. Jack, seven of clubs for Menzel. And this looks like it's a family pot. All three players going to the flop. 
And all three players connect in some way here. Pizarri with the top pair, Menzel with the gut shot straight draw, and Shilko with the flush draw. Shilko knows that this board connects with the small blind calling range, but he has a hand that is almost never good immediately but can get better hands to fold here, especially with pressure on later streets while having the, these draws. Fold from Menzel, heads up to the turn, which is the king of diamonds, and that is the flush for Shilko. And it would have made a straight for, for Menzel as well. This is uh, where, if you're Menzel, you're kicking yourself, saying, oh, I made a bad fold. If the hand goes to showdown, you're like, I made a great fold. Exactly. It's a great card for Shilko, but a card that's going to be difficult for Pizarro to call a bet here. It's a four-liner out here to straight. He has just top pair. And no diamond in his hand. So another bet from Shilko, 1.5 million. And Pizarro folds. The risk-averse play continues. Shilko retakes the chip lead, although it's pretty even at the top. Meanwhile, Philippe Pizarri has dropped down to 16 big blinds. And that's because the blinds have just gone up. This is level 35 of the PSPC, 300,000, 600,000, with a 600,000 big blind ante. That means the big blind is 10 starting stacks now. So when you are in the big blind, you are effectively posting 20 starting stacks with the ante and the big blind. It's quite, quite a bit out there. 20 players in the pot before any cards are dealt. I, I peaked at about one-tenth of what they're putting out in the in the big blind here. Philly asks, what happened to Nacho? Well, here's a clue. If he's no longer at the table, chances are he was eliminated. I don't know when you tuned out, Philly, but he did lose the chip lead. He became a short stack. And he got it in with top pair against two pair and did not improve. Nacho had quite the roller coaster wild ride at this final table. All the chips went back down, came all the chips again. Yeah, I would say if you missed the first hour of this final table, I urge you to go back on the VOD and watch it because there was some wild stuff happening and Nacho made a huge mistake, which he somehow recovered from before then losing all of his chips again. Yeah, but still, had he not made that mistake, things obviously would be different. Absolutely. I watched every hand. Yeah, that first hour was, was great, great coverage. Hmm. Oh, three aces. range actually this flop actually favors the small blind because it went limp check back yeah small blind has more aces in his range that he completes from whereas the big blind would have raised most of his aces big cards and pairs here so the small blind has range advantage can bet here and take it down here a lot what and max <laughs> is aware of that oh! bets and takes it down maybe a few people asking what does the widget say? Now, the widget is currently tracking a 30 big blind average. They are playing a 33 big blind average stack. The widget has us getting heads up in level 36, which is the next level. The widget has us reaching a winner by level 39. No, it's less than that. Five, six, four, seven, eight. Wow, so it's possible that we could play on beyond no, this block, beyond these that, next yeah. four levels. And the widget's batting average has been pretty high since, I, since I've been listening to its predictions all week. Of 
course. The widget does become skewed once deals have been agreed. Although, from what we've seen so far, Scott, you would never know that a deal had been agreed. It hasn't influenced the play at all. That's absolutely true. And now we have Pizarro oh, aces in the big blind as it was just limped to him and just rips it. Very interesting there. Bora, porra. Just rips in 13 big blinds with aces as it was limped to him. I think that's the hand we can go for a small, like a min raise here out of the big blind. <laughs> Allow your opponent to call while he's way behind or perhaps induce a shove. Yeah. If there's any hand to do it with, it's exactly aces. Even a hand like kings requires more protection. So a reminder that the final three did agree a deal. There is still prize money to be played for, but... Pizarri locked up 2.5 million. Menzel, 2.7 million. Shilko, 2.9 million. Whoever finishes second gets an extra 100k. Whoever wins gets an extra 200k. So on we go. Cara, tem uns nove blinds agora. Pô, o CL deve ter, cara, uns 40. Tá tranquilo. Now, I'm not asking this selfishly, Scott. I'm asking this on behalf of these players because I want them to have their victory lap. When does the party start? The players' party? I think it's uh, 7 to 11. Starts 10 minutes. Ace King, the hands that we've been seeing three handed are pretty absurd. Top pair for Menzel, middle pair for Shilko. Like I said before, you're more likely to have those aces in the small blind when the hands are checked through. That's because he was limping the small blind as a trap here with his ace king. Should go check back the queen seven, but that queen seven, too strong here to fold to a single bet. And you have middle pair. Menzel picks up a king high flush draw to go along with his top pair, top kicker. But queen seven gets a little bit dicier here now facing a second bet, not having a club in his hand. If we do get a second bet out of Menzel, which I assume that we will. And he goes big, he goes almost three quarters pot. Three million. I think we can let go of this this queen seven here. We have a lot of stronger hands here. We've got two pairs. We've got flushes. We have our hand with a club in its hand. Without having a straight draw or a flush draw to go along with our queen here, I don't think we can continue. He is going to continue. But he is. Shilko calls. I, I mean, he's not drawing dead. He's not, but I think this is a theoretical mistake just because we have so many better hands to call with. Even if we're just going to call the times we have a queen with a club in our hands or a queen with a 10 or a 9 in our hands for a straight draw. So Menzel with top two. It is a straighty, flashy board. Might just play this as a check. He's been playing rather conservatively. That's true. But he goes big, goes 60% pot here. So Menzel retakes the chip lead. We are going to see a lot of swings because the stacks are close. Well, certainly between Menzel and Shilko, they're <laughs> close. And they are also relatively shallow. But Menzel's hovering around the 50 big blind mark. Shilko around 35 bigs. And then we have Felipe Pizarri 
with just 12 big blinds. He is edging into the danger zone. Money can go away, right? Danger zone! Huh? Money can go away, right? <laughs> really? Exactly. Menzel now with that relative new and relatively big chip lead. Gonna put some pressure on here. What was that? Imagine he's opening the button here with his 10-9 suited. Got to play the 10-9. Got to play the Grafton. And it's going to be raise and take it. In fact, I think he shoved on his opponents there. Wow, that would be a lot of chips if he did that. We had Shell 36 big lines. We have reached hand 111 <laughs> of the final table. Nelson. Zari is going to complete in the small with 70 suited. I think Menzel might have more chips than anyone else has ever had in the tournament so far. He now has over half the chips in play, and I think this is the first time that's the case. Good observation, Scott. He does have 30 million. I guess I'm looking at how many big blinds that equals, and it doesn't seem that impressive. But it is. To have half the chips three-handed is impressive. And aces again. These hands have been absolute monsters that we've been seeing three ways. Second time aces has shown up. And Menzel wins another hand up to nearly 32 million now. And Pizzari is on the ropes now. Yeah, 11 big blinds here on the button. He's going to be shoving with a pretty wide range of hands here. Most of his face cards. Wow, he's got a, another huge hand, tens. He's opening tens off of 11 big blinds, which looks a little fishy. Exactly what Maria was talking about earlier when uh, Max was opening under the gun off of 16 big blinds. It was, it was sort of deep enough to open when you're opening around that 10 big blind stack. Generally, when you come in to play the hand for a raise here, you're just going to shove. So when you're opening off of that, it looks rather strong. The way to balance that is you have also your opening a balance of weak hands that you're going to fold to a shove as well. Still, I think with 10s there, probably just shove it in. Last case, three, right? Yeah, just so. Probably can open as light as Seven, queen six on the button here. Three, Especially since these guys eight, aren't total. playing back Seven particularly nine. hard. Seven point nine. Total. Seven point nine. <laughs> yeah, and against, I think we're going to shove here with king three against uh, Pizarro's 12 big line stack. Yep. That's what he does. Big sight from Pizzari. And the blinds are going to be going up in around 15 minutes. Nowhere to hide anymore. Three-handed play. You're in the blinds two-thirds of the time. 30-minute clock. 
The blinds are going to keep going up frequently. It's going to cost you $1.5 million chips in orbit. C-Star on Twitch says, who is the analyst walking us through the hands? That is Scott Baumstein. What's your title for Scott? The king of South Florida poker, Joe? That's it. You nailed it. The king of South Florida poker. And a PSPC finalist from 2019. Which I think is probably a top 10 poker market worldwide. 19, 20, 20. No, it's, it's <laughs> terrible. Don't come. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, South Florida is obviously a great place to play. Oh, folding the fours. Very conservative. I'd be going for some set miming if I had all the chips and already locked up two point whatever million. Well, the three bet has come from a guy with a ten big blind yeah, stack. Bet. Yeah, no, I, I. Didn't see that three bet. Bunzo Steel says, did you say 30 minute levels? Weren't they 60 minutes before? Yes, they were, but that was before we were down to three players and they agreed a deal. I'm all in. I have some of that. Can't call, won't call. Picks up a lot of chips there. Well, a pair. Uh, chips that was a lot. 50% there. <laughs> did he have a pair? No. I fell for it. There were no pairs. <laughs> well, well, it wasn't convincing you know, <laughs> in the way. <laughs> what? I see yeah, I don't, after Jam of Love, I don't think you had aces. <laughs> I pulled a pair. Yeah. You pulled a pair? Yeah. Oh, really? Very smart. You pulled deuces, come on. <laughs> no, he's kind of. more than deuces, but deuces. <laughs> More really strong hands here. They've been giving out ace-queen like M&Ms here. Sized up a little bit more than a min-raise. Yeah, because of that, I think we can actually fold. It was a borderline hand. Stone says, what were the technical difficulties? I missed it. Apologies once again if you were inconvenienced by the fact the stream went down earlier on. We were off for about 30, 45 minutes. But the good news is that we basically just paused the feed so you haven't missed any action. We're on a slightly longer delay than usual, running at around a 45-minute delay right now. But no one is reporting in real time. Our thanks to the guys at Poker News who provide the live updates. They're logging off the delay as we see chip leader Max Menzel with queens on the button. I mean, after they made a deal, poker gods were trying to get them to put all their chips in the middle. But these guys aren't cooperating. Cooperate. Wow. Oh, my word. Menzel started this hand with a 50 big blind stack. Alexander Shilko with a... 30 big blind stack. So the good news for Menzel, he can't go broke here. But this has echoes of the Tom Parsons hand, a platinum pass winner who had queens when Shilko picked up aces. They're even shallower here, though. There's no way these two guys don't get their chips in here. 
pre-flop right now. Shilko has three bet to 6.2 million. Man Manziel's going to jam. And Shilko will snap call. It's queens versus aces for 30 big blinds effective. Yeah, he's all in. A shove and a call, and Menzel sees the bad news. He's run queens into aces, but he cannot go broke here. And if he gets lucky, Scott, if he spikes a queen, he goes heads up with a monstrous chip lead. And the aces have both suits dominated, too. Aces are in as good of a spot as he, as he could be in. Queen is going to need to catch a queen or make a straight. <laughs> The flop is 10 4 3. Doesn't change anything. Menzel still needs a queen. Same outs with one last chance to hit. The river is a six. Aces hold. And that is a huge double up for Alexander Shilko who's now playing 37.8 million. That's the biggest stack anyone's had at the final table, Scott. And that is quite the cooler in that spot to run aces into queens. I mean, nothing you can do about it, just bad luck. So, Shilko playing 63 bigs. Menzel's dropped down to 17 bigs. Nazari, 18 bigs. Uh, what a spot Shilko finds himself in now. Huge advantage as this three-handed battle continues. Yeah, absolutely. And, and both these guys now, uh, Pizarro oh. and Menzel, have the 17, 18 big blind stacks. So Shilko can now sort of jam on both of them. And they're going to need to find not as strong hands as they would have if not for the deal. But still, they're going to need to find very strong hands. They, there is still more money to play for. They are still trying to win the tournament with, you know, the prestige that we mentioned before that goes along with it. So Shilko can still definitely put a ton of pressure on them with any ace, any king, you know, and a lot of these, you know, playable hands. He can just go all in for for the, like, 17 big blind effective stacks here. Sorry for <laughs> How much are you playing now? Sorry for asking. Sorry I took most of your chips, but how many do you have left? Yeah, he's got about 38 million of the 60 or so million chips in play. This is why you make deals, people, because you find yourself in an unavoidable situation where you have to get it in with queens and you run into aces. Yeah, like I think this queen eight offsuit here from the button, I think I probably just would have played it for as a jam. When you open to a min raise, you get jammed on a lot of the time by, you know, your ace fours and your ace fives, you know, your weak aces and your, your middle kings and all these hands that would, and your small pairs that you can just fold them out if you just jam yourself. Wow, that's interesting. Defend the big blind with 9 6, and then chooses to lead. We haven't seen any leads from him, and he chooses this spot here to lead with pretty much, you know, virtually no equity. But I would have liked to see, I think Queen 8 off in that spot is strong enough to just put them in and make them pick up a real hand. But it doesn't look like he's going to take that strategy, a strategy that. Nacho was employing when he had all the chips. How much you playing? Eleven. Eleven. Thank you. In total, right? Well, now we have a clear jam here with pocket sixes against Pizarri's 16 big blinds. 16 behind, he started the hand with like 18 big blinds.
Whatever. I mean, Lynn Paul? Shilko locked up the most money in that three-way <laughs> deal. He had the chip lead when they agreed the deal. And right now, he is the favorite to close out the PSPC yes. with a Value. significant chip advantage. Huge lead over Max Menzel and Philippe Pizzari. Dicey spot for Menzel with the ace twos offsuit as he has about 21 big blinds here. He's just going to play this as a min raise fold. So that side of the room is mostly Max Menzel supporters. There's a few people on Alexander Shilko's rail on the other side of the room. Do we have any Brazilians in the house? Does Philippe Pizzari have anyone I mean, cheering for him? If there were Brazilians on the rail, we would have heard them. I think it's clear that Philippe Pizzari is not part of the Brazilian poker community. He oh, lives in, in Miami, Florida. I, I think he lives in Miami. I, I play with yeah. him at the Hard Rock, you know, semi-regularly. He's been there for nearly 10 years, so not really part of any of the staking or training groups from that country. So he's the closest thing to an American representation we have at this final table. Shilko has opened on the button. Pizzari has called. Menzel has called. We're going three-way to the flop. Which is queen, nine, deuce. Open-ended straight draw for Shilko. Got Still shot from Pizzari. Indeed. Shilko continuing for 1.4 million. Bizarre calls. Bit of a loose call here off of this shallow stack that he has. Only 10 big blinds here. Kind of hand we might otherwise, if we're a little deeper, turn into our bluffs with our gut shot and backdoor flush draw. But I think we're a little too shallow to take one off here, hoping just for a 10. And I think with seven million in the pot, six million behind, Shilko just pushes in here. Try to get Pizzari off of his, you know, nine X hands. I think, I think he has an all in here. Yeah. And we obviously cannot call with our jacket. Can't call, won't call. We'll be left with a ten big blind stack, six million even. Shilko crosses the 42 million mark, 70 big blinds. So we've got literally 100 big blinds in play right now. 70 of them, 70% 70 of the chips in play belong to Shilko. 20 big blinds for Menzel, 10 big blinds for Pizzari. Yeah, and I'd like to see some more pre-flop pressure implemented from Shilko. Just make these guys pick up a hand. And in the meantime, you're gonna make them fold and, and extend that chip lead until they do. We need some ram and jamming. You know, generally you're gonna complete here with your 10-4 suited, but I think he's gonna get pressured here a ton once he does complete here. Like, this is a perfect hand for him to be shoving with, the weak aces. Huh? But he does not want to do that. Huh. 7-6 deuce on the flop. Ace high still ahead. I 
I think we can bet here, bet one big blind. We get our opponents to fold all sorts of hands that have a decent amount of equity against you. We have our ace high, which is probably good. Backdoor straight and false draws. But I think we just get to stab here a ton. When we don't take that pressure spot pre-flop and we do see flops while out chipping your opponent, just put out one big blind and your opponent just can't really continue unless he has a piece of that. Nine on the turn has not changed anything. Shilko, 88% favorite. And, and Zell checks. If Shilko checked the flop, I expect him to check the turn here as well. Not a good turn card for his hand. But his ace high still going to be good here a fair amount of the time. River card is the nine of clubs pairing the board. Uh, Shilko will check back if it's checked to him. I think he'll call a small bet here as well. Ace high is going to be good here as played, I'd say, pretty often. Menzel knows he probably does not have the best hand here, and the only way he can win the pot is by bluffing at it for a million, which is just, just over half pot. I think we're going to see a call here from Shilko. Feels like a six. I can see why it feels like a six. Certainly knows it's probably not a nine. It's a double paired and, and, that, and that relatively not super big sizing. And he, but a lot of the time you get a six or a seven would have bet into you on the flop. Good call. Ten high. Makes the ace high hero call and wins another pot. Extends his chip lead as we continue three-handed action at the PSPC final table. And we have hit a new blind level, Scott. Level 36 now. The blinds 400,000, 800,000. So let's just look at the stacks. Shilko, 72 big blinds. Happy days. Max Menzel, 18 big blinds. It's even less now. Hello. 11 at... Uh, It'll be like 14 big blinds and six big blinds for Pizarro. Oh, good point. It hasn't adjusted yet. Oh, shit. Now <laughs> it's adjusted. So, yes, 54 big blinds for Shilko. Still happy days. Menzel, 13 bigs. Pizarro, just five big blinds. Yeah, five and a half big blinds. He's got two orbits before he's anteed out of this tournament, effectively. Cost him two and a half big blinds every three hands. And now Shilko has all of the chips versus 13 big blinds and five big blinds. I don't think we really have a lot of pre flop play here until we get heads up. I think we should be going all in here a ton. And, and um, Menzel in a, in a spot without the ICM, Queen 8 suited would be good enough for 13 big blinds here on the button but you don't want to go out before that five big blind stack. You want to get heads up for this title here, but he is going all in. Manzel has shoved with queen eight. I think we saw Alexander Shilko fold there. Yep. So that means it's a case of whether Philippe Pizari wants to call all in. And he's going to be calling here a lot with only five big blinds. I had live cards. I should have called. <laughs> Said he had live cards, probably Maybe. something like six, seven. Yeah. Zari posts the small blind, Menzel posts the big blind and the ante. And that means chip leader Alexander Shilko will be first to act yep. on the button. No. I think he gets to go all in a ton here. Yeah, Love to 30. see him putting more pressure 30. on. 30. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, not anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, drop one from. I paid, I paid your ante. What Shilko got? King all Deuce. In. All in. No. But Pizari is all in, shoving small to big with ace jack. And we probably should be calling here. Yeah. King four for Menzel. He makes the call, putting Pizari at risk. Fair enough. 
Yeah, yeah he's happy enough to see it. Having live cards could be in worse shape with this King Four there. With the price he's getting, it's a good call. Good luck. Thank you, my friend. Good luck. Thank you. But as we saw, a king Four. is dead. Mm. So it's an uphill battle for Menzel. Well, it's Pizarro who's a risk here. He's the player who needs the best hand to hold. Come on, come on. King, king, king. Nine, eight, seven. I think I can. Don't king. call for outs when you're ahead. King. Four. Club. Six of clubs. <laughs> Over. On the turn, has Menzel drawing dead? So, it's five big ones. Exactly. Philippe Pizarri doubles up and may actually leapfrog. Max Menzel does. Pizarri now with 9.6 million. Menzel down to 7.9 million. That's the thing, you say to your opponent, eh, it's just five big blinds, but now Menzel is the low man at the table. Targo watching on Twitch says, time to step on the gas pedal, Shilko. That's what you've been saying, Scott. Like, really, really put the pressure on the other two. Especially as there is a 100k difference between third and second. They agreed that extra prize money. Right, absolutely. I think he is passing on spots that are sort of, you know, given his chip lead pretty clear pressure spots. I know you don't like to put it in with King Deuce there, but when these guys have... You know, 12 and 5 big blinds, I think you just have to. Bizarre opening on the button here with King 10. Another strange open. The guy only has 12 big blinds. You should just put it all in, because if he's jammed on, he's not going to want to call it off with King 10. Philip Marquez says 2.9 million is pocket... Sorry, 100K is pocket change compared to 2.9 million. Yeah, but 100 grand is 100 grand. I don't care how much money you got. You don't just kind of look down your nose at a six-figure sum. Well, that and there's also just intrinsic value in winning this tournament. It is one of the most prestigious tournaments, you know, in the world of the year or of the, you know, the past four years. Um, perhaps even the, you know, probably the second most prestigious tournament in the world. And 125 of the final table. We've lost three players so far today. Two more eliminations, and we will have our winner. A three-way deal was agreed earlier. We're still <laughs> playing for $300,000 in prize money, plus the trophy and title. Yeah, this hand's going to be right on the borderline. I don't mind that fold. Yeah, and when Pizarri's playing so passively, I like the limp in here from Shilko. Certainly not strong enough to, to go all in with here, but I think he's going to get to see a flop for free here a lot. Which is Jack Deuce Deuce. Nine high, still ahead. I think as the chip leader, you can just put out one big blind here a lot and just get your opponent to fold all the time. Shilko's still playing quite passively, and Very. it's Pizarri who bets. Pizarri has a range advantage on this board because Shilko was less inclined to complete from the small blind containing a deuce, but Pizarri has all the deuces in his hand. So we continue three-handed at the 400-800 blind level. Shilko, the chip leader, with 50 bigs. Pizarri and Menzel both short. Pizarri playing 15 bigs. Menzel now down to seven big blinds. Yeah, this should be all in here with King Six, but given how he's been playing, I don't think he's going to do that. 
folds it. Pizarri calls with Queen Do suited. Menzel with 8 5 off. Checks his option. The flop is 10 5 deuce. So we've got second pair versus bottom pair. Pizarri checking his deuces. Does Menzel want to bet his fives? I think we generally should here. He is shallow. He only has seven big blinds here, and I don't think we can be folding this. When you flop middle pair. 800,000 apiece. Turn card. Here's the five of diamonds, Menzel. Pretty good spot to perhaps check back here, keep your opponent his range wide. I think unless unless Pizarri has a 10, you're gonna fold out pretty much everything here if you bet again. And if he has a 10, you're gonna be able to get value from the river. I love that check. Oh, wow. Perfect river card for him. He's gonna boat over boat him. It looks like he's going to get this double here. Pizarri does play cautiously in check, and now we're gonna see a bet probably in the three-ish million range. And Pizarri cannot get away from this. He has a full house, just not as good as Menzel's full house. Pizarri's calling anything that Menzel bets here. I bet it all. I don't see him over bet all in. I, I, I Probably three million, three and a half million. He does it. He does it. Goes for the over bet, shoves. I guess he figures if he's up against the 10 or a deuce, those hands are probably going to call him anyway, and all the other missed hands that he's up against probably aren't going to call a sizable bet. Yeah, and there it. is the single chip call from Pizarri. Boat over boat, and oh, Menzel wow. doubles up. I like that he chose the sizing to go with that all-in sizing. He's up against a 10 or a 5, or a deuce, rather. He's going to get called there a lot. So these guys switch positions again, Scott. Menzel now with 17 big blinds. Pizarri with 7. But what hasn't changed is that Shilko still has this massive advantage and is still playing quite conservatively. Right, like he could have taken that hand down pre-flop. It's almost like he's like waiting for them to knock out each other, when in reality, he should just sort of be trying to maneuver their stacks combined lower and lower and lower, so that when he does get heads up to whoever survives, he has an even bigger chip advantage. Five. I don't think he, he it seems like his background, which is probably in MTTs, He's not used to short-handed play. He's not, not probably a heads-up player or a sit-and-go player. And, uh, you know, it's it's showing to some extent here that he doesn't see the value of hands like King Deuce and King Six when you're three-handed and your opponents are this short. Yep. So we play on. Blinds going up in around 15 minutes time. Sorry about it. And those short stacks are gonna get even shorter. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. I think this is, you can see that. That's amazing. Can't ask for more. Menzel folds the small blind. Guys, waiting for me, huh? <laughs> so Shilko gets a walk in that hand. More fun with you. <laughs> now Pizarri down to five big blinds. This is the shortest oh he's been. Oh my god. I think we should be seeing a ton of jams here by Shilko, but seems unwilling. And, and Menzel cannot afford to jam right now while Pizarri is so short. 
unless he has a very strong hand. This hand, I think he's going to get called here a lot, so maybe this is our small part of our range where we might complete the small blind really? and fold to a jam. Thank you. He had it with Ace Nine. He would have called nine. him for sure. Oh. Yeah, I mean, Chad on YouTube making the observation: this could go for another two hours. I I have that fear right now that these guys are just gonna continue trying to small ball it, and Shilko is gonna continue to play quite passively and just hold on to that chip lead, and it's just gonna get shallower and shallower and shallower. Well, at least the blind levels are 30 minutes now. In, in another 15 minutes' time, the blind, big blind's going to go up to a million. It's going to be hard for them to hang on that long as these blinds go up. It is quite a stunning trophy. The winner will lift that glorious trophy. Once we have our champion in the second edition of the PSPC, these three players, the last three of 1014, as Shilko pulls the trigger on the button, shoves with deuces, gets a fold from the small blind. And uh, Menzel can't afford to be calling with very many hands here. We're going to get it through. Johannes says, is it definitely going to come to an end tonight? Yes. Eventually, the blinds, as you just alluded to, Scott, will force this to its conclusion. I think you only have the convention space for tonight, probably. I will kick you out by morning. In all seriousness, deconstruction of the set and the dismantling of the poker room needs to start tonight. <laughs> So no pressure, guys. If you could just get on with it, <laughs> we'd really one. appreciate it. <laughs> no, I see. Guys, I'm invited. You're crazy, both of you. <laughs> I'm invited. <laughs> huh? You pay my dinner? Really? I'm I'm really, I really have a <laughs> You pay my dinner? <laughs> <laughs> I have a voucher for the dinner if you want to go. <laughs> no, really. Look at Max all being loosey goosey with his dinner vouchers. <laughs> Giving up equity. <laughs> Vote for Pickle. Says, could you remind us of the nationalities, the remaining three, please? Absolutely. We've got Philippe Pizzari from Brazil. Originally from Sao Paulo, now lives in Miami, Florida. Really? Max Menzel is German. And you? Got a currently balls. lives in Singapore. And Alexander Shilko is from Belarus. Yeah. Oli. Not folding. Not folding, for sure. No folding at all. Gart asks, what happened to YouTube? You need to be more specific. I believe it still exists. It's owned by Google. Has videos, live streams. Where are we at? Hand one, three, two. Shilko on the button. Ace three. We all in. Jam on it. All in here. Do it. Triangle them. He's up against 12 and 7 big blinds. With an ace with all the chips. There we go. That's how you do it. Maximum hmm. pressure. Chip stack in your face. says, I want this to end. Are you not entertained? <laughs> Why are you watching? He 
you want it to end. Action will start with Pizarri on the buck. I'm all in. And he shoves for seven big blinds with Jack seven of hearts. Sure, just, you know, that's probably about the weakest hand-ish. Oh! Call, but Menzel, we're going to be putting it in here with King-Queen suited. And he's the guy you want to go up against, because if you win this, you get heads up and give yourself a fighting chance at the title. I think we're going to reshove here with King-Queen suited. What if, blind. what if Shilko finds a hand in the big blind? Be quite the way to end this if, if that's how it happens. There's no question, King Queen suited way strong enough. There's the reshove. Second triangle deployed. Chilko has snap folded, so it will be Pizarri all in and at risk against Max Menzel. Jack seven against King Queen. Pizarri with life cards, 34% equity, but he needs to hit. He's currently behind, and if he doesn't spike a jack, a seven, some straight or flush combos, we are going to be down to two. <laughs> A small Brazilian rail for Pizarri. At risk and behind. Queen 3-3 oh. three, three with two hearts. It is never easy. What a flop. The queen for Menzel, the flush draw it's for Pizarri. Turn card is the ace of diamonds. So Pizarri is drawing to a heart. A heart on the river, he makes a flush, he survives. Any other card, we're going heads up in the PSPC. The river is a jack, not enough. Philippe Pizarri is third place finisher in the Pokestars Players No Limit Hold'em Championship. It's Menzel heads up against Shilko. And Philippe obviously benefited from the deal they agreed earlier on. Third place should have got 1.9 million. But wow. Philippe Pizarri has just cashed out for 2.5 million. <laughs> yeah, got the extra 600,000. Seems in good spirits. Deal worked out for him. I think he's, uh, you know, he played well, played pretty conservatively, but I think he's going to be very happy with the result, bringing that back home to Florida. I have a dinner point. Hey, yeah, 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 really. I do my best. Wishes Max Menzel good luck. He has got a hurdle to overcome. He's at more than a two to one chip deficit against Alexander Shilko in the forthcoming heads up battle. Now we're going to have uh, Shilko's going to have 52 big blinds to Menzel's 21 big blinds. <laughs> Clock has been paused as we reset for the start of this heads up battle. And again, going to highlight for the second time, just as we had in 2019, a platinum pass winner is going heads up for the title. Max Menzel won his entry to this tournament for free, having taken down the road to PSPC event in Manila. The platinum pass added to the prize pool of that tournament. And here he is, already guaranteed 2.7 million. Now 2.8 million, right? Because he's guaranteed to get the extra 100K right. per second. And that means uh, Shilko is now guaranteed over the $3 million mark. An additional 200K to the winner, but also a place in poker history. You get that trophy. You earn the championship title. Following in the footsteps of Ramon Kalilas. So that is Diana. That is Mikita Bodzikovsky's partner who's chatting to Alexander on the rail. I've 
And obviously, yeah. having been here many, time. many times, Ain't Scott, Ain't 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 we could be done in one, one hand. One step, one step. It might take a hundred hands. At least they shorten these levels for you guys. And Menzel, I mean, you got to give this guy credit. I think he came into the final table as the second shortest stack. Correct. And Managed to ladder up to at least second place. Survives. Secured the deal, Absolutely. gets heads up, gets the extra 100,000 on top of it, and now has a chance at the title. I mean, he's really maximized what he's been playing for here today. Joe Stapleton back in the booth just in time for the start of Heads Up Play, Joey. Oh, man, this is what I'm most useless to you. You think I'm bad at other analysis? I got nothing for heads up. Just no. let Scott Baumstein do the analysis yeah. <laughs> and you just chime in with Scott's the Scott's won a tournament. He's won a heads up match or two. It almost gets simpler as you get heads up, but uh, you know, heads up is actually my, uh, you know, where I, my specialty. Your forte. In, in, in poker. Sarcastic where responses and witticisms, Joe. That's what we need as we see that it is 54 <laughs> big blinds versus 21 big blinds. Max Menzel, the platinum pass winner, is heads up for the title against Alexander Shilko, but is at a disadvantage right now. And those blinds will go up in eight minutes. And as you highlighted, Scott, it's a million big blind the next level. Yeah, and so I think it won't take too long, but anything can happen here, especially since these guys seem on the conservative side. I think a lot of the, a lot of people, when they get heads up and they make a deal, just sort of get in the money rather quickly. But these guys, are, I think, are going to play play slow and, and uh, you know, make us earn it, earn it here in the booth. Well, of course, the deal was agreed earlier on. It was a three-way deal. Menzel getting around 2.75 million. Alexander Shilko getting 2.9 million. They're both guaranteed an additional 100K for making it to second. Plus, the winner will get an additional 200K and lift the trophy. It has been a very dramatic day. I have to say, the last few days, from the bubble onwards, this has been a draining tournament, not just for the players, but for us in the booth. Draining because you get pumped up full of energy and emotion. And then yes. that, finally, when that settles back down, it happens again. And it's happened over and over in this tournament. I don't know if it was always going to be like that, just be, based on the very nature of this tournament, or if this is particularly dramatic. I don't remember it being like this last time. No knock to the 2019 PSPC. This has been... Bananas. B-A-H-A-M-A-S. Hey, it's been bananas. <laughs> Bahamas. <laughs> just, just, just don't try that. Ba Bahamas. <laughs> it's been Bahamas. We are going heads up. Getting cards in the air once again. We're playing with straddle? Or straddle? This one pair? Mm, half straddle? Full straddle? Half straddle. Ante, ante. Straddle? I mean, ante. You're it's not playing it's one of your <laughs> cash games in Asia, Max. <laughs> This is tournament you poker. If you don't straddle a Macau, they escort you off the island. So I'm having. Yeah, 17. I think we should be coming in for raises here a lot, but it looks like he's going to be content to call with the 10 5 offsuit on the button. We should continually be putting pressure on our opponent when we're in position on the button. Menzel has checked his option with Jack 9 offsuit. The flop is 8 5 5. Trips for Shilko. Fortunately for Menzel, he has nothing. Right, this isn't a flop that Jack Nine can generally put himself in any any trouble, but he is going to put out the one big blind here. I imagine we have a just call here for Shilko. Yeah, 
We're not really scared of many turn cards. And he does just decide to call. 800K a piece. 10 on the turn. So Menzel now picks up the open-ended straight draw. Shilko, however, has a full house. So he does not want to make his straight here. It could all be over on the first hand of heads-up play. Probably a decent card for him to continue betting, he and does. he does. <laughs> Bets 2.8 million yeah, into that. 4 million. And if I'm sitting in Shilko's shoes, it looks like a bluff because the other hand that he might have had on the flop was an 8 and with the 10 card rolling off on the turn, it doesn't really look like an eight anymore. I think he otherwise would have shut down if he picked up virtually any other card that wasn't the 10. Love to see him just call here again. How is Shulko keeping it together? <laughs> and he uses the time bank. I don't even know that that's a ploy at this point. He could be just freaking out. I think we're just calling here. You have your opponent dead and you're in position. So you let your opponent either make a hand and value bet into you in the river or bluff. This is an occasion where the Germans are hoping that it is not always coming seven. Oh man. He, he wants to make it look like he has an eight here and a decision to make on that turn bet. Yeah, he has made the call. So we go to the river. 9.6 million in the middle. The river card wow! is a queen. It That's could all it. be over on the first hand here. And it probably will be. It's game over. I don't see how Menzel gets away from this. He's rivered the straight, but Shilko turned the full house. Menzel was actually drawing dead on the turn. Absolutely, it's got to be over here. There's no, it's the biggest, the only straight and the biggest possible straight. There's no flush when your head's up you're not running into full houses here very often. And now he's beating some of his fives. He could have had a hand like ace five or yeah. king five that he's now beating. So many fives. That he would have played exactly the same way if he had ace five instead of ten five in this situation. Then you're going to stack ace five. If, if you're Menzel, you're hoping that Shilko has a five here because most of his fives don't make full houses. No escape for Max Menzel as Shilko he, he values checked. the river. He checked. Yeah, he checked and he's setting up the check raise all in. You know it's coming. 4.5 million, the bet from Shilko. What if and if doesn't? Menzel requests the triangle, it is over. He should be jamming here. You're beating too many hands. In fact, you're beating more fives that aren't full houses than are. Way more. He's waiting for his moment. You know he's going to pull the trigger. Especially having made that deal. All in and a call, and it is over. So sick. <laughs> so sick. The so ultimate sick. cold deck, the wow. ultimate cooler to end the second edition of the Poker Stars Players No Limit Hold'em Championship as Alexander Shilko from Belarus takes it down for over three million dollars. <laughs> the marathon heads up battle. First hand of heads up, a straight versus a full house. Max Menzel, the platinum pass winner from Germany, is the runner-up. He cashes for more than 2.8 million. Remember, they agreed a three-way deal earlier, but it is Alexander Shilko's moment. The 26-year-old is the champion of the PSPC. He may not be the champion, but $2.8 million on an investment of $0 is a pretty solid result. Yeah, and as we said before, he came in here into foul table as the short stack. He really maximized what he was leaving here with, in for nothing, out for almost $3 million, got heads up. He's got to be absolutely thrilled with the result. Alexander Shilko congratulated by Max Menzel's rail. What a result for this 26-year-old.
Я знаю. Locked up 2.9 million in the deal. Gets the additional 200k for the win. That's 3.1 million dollars. It's real. It's happened. You are the champion. You've taken it down. Он типа охерел, он очень знакомый. Я вот так его выгружал, говорю, мне нужна твоя энергия. Он говорит, хорошо. Я подошел к нему, вот так вот сделал, и потом... Шилко, breathing it in, and... Talking to Makichi Bozikovsky's partner, Diana. Тузы в дамы, тузы в дамы, пухал стрит. Very soon we will hear from our champion. And we will present him with his trophy. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our 10 days of live coverage from the Bahamas, including all five days of the PSPC, including today's final table, which certainly delivered. Again, apologies for the technical problems earlier, which temporary halted transmission, but you didn't miss a single hand, you didn't miss a single moment, and you saw the winning moment, as we have our second ever PSPC winner. So let's remind ourselves how it went down Let's run through what happened at the final table of this 25k tournament. We started with six players, six confirmed millionaires taking their seats. Nicholas Tum couldn't manage to get past sixth place, but nothing but love from the rail. Pedro Marques got it in good with Ace King versus Pizarri's A6. Brutal river card. He was sent packing in fifth. Nacho Barbero tried to invoke his one time. Two pair beat top pair. And then the remaining three agreed to a three-way ICM deal, leaving 300K to play for. Philippe Pizzari had jack seven of hearts. Looked pretty promising on the flop, but he was done on the river. And so it was the German Platinum Pass winner versus the young Belarusian pro. Heads up play, one hand. The coldest of coolers. The straight, no good against the full house. Alex Chilko, our second ever PSPC champion. What a moment for Alex Chilko. And now we will hear from our winner, he is down on the floor with Joe Stapleton. Alex, this tournament was over three years in the making. It took you at least five days more of waiting to win it. What are your feelings of the PSPC as a whole? Yeah, it was an amazing experience. I had a lot of fun. I met a lot of good people and winning such a big tournaments makes the it means the world for me you know i saw some real emotional ups and downs from you especially ups uh, when we saw you spike that straight on the river you ran over to the rail tons of emotion what emotions are you feeling right this second yeah uh, you know i'm quite a calm person but when i saw this queen i can't handle myself uh, but i said sorry to my opponents that's for sure and now i'm totally out of emotions to be honest, I'm not feeling anything. I don't know. It feels like a dream. Like all these people around talking with you, it's, it's incredible. Dream come true. Uh, we uh, sometimes joke in this business that the real prize is the friendships you make along the way. You did seem to make some friends at the table. Is that true? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I met a lot of good guys, good players, and all the guys on the final table was were really nice. We had a nice chat. Not that much because it was big money up top, but uh, yes, I definitely have much more friends after this final table. And speaking of friends, I saw you run over and give a 
hug to the first PSPC champion, Ramon. And I know that you guys shared a couple of moments. Can you uh, share those with us? Uh, for instance, too much, I guess. But uh, yeah, we just know each other. We played a couple of times on the same table. And uh, when I was near the poker room, I uh, saw the Ramon. First, I just go through him, and I'm like, oh no, I need to just come, to, come to him and just touch him and like say, please, I need your energy. And uh, then he said that everyone did like this, but okay. Uh, and it worked out well for me, and I'm happy to be the winner. The energy worked. It got to you for sure. I guess uh, one last question I want to ask you. You joked this morning about how uh, you, you paid for a $9 candy bar here, and that would go a long way where you're from. How far is $3.1 million going to go where you are from? I don't know, man. It's too much for money. I need a lot of time to figure it out. I'm sure he'll figure out something to do with it. Let's get a big round of applause for our PSPC champion, Alexander Shoko. <laughs> Alexander Shoko clearly overwhelmed. What an achievement, Let's what a result way. for the young Belarusian player. And here's how it ended at the PSPC final table. Congratulations to both of our Platinum Pass winners, Nicholas Tum and Max Menzel, a million and 2.8 million respectively. But of course, most of the money was taken down by the winner, the second ever winner of the PokerStars Players No Limit Hold'em Championship. You saw the trophy on the stage. Time to present that trophy to our winner. Hello and welcome to the trophy presentation for the 2023 PSPC. Since 2019, we have eagerly awaited the return of this unique opportunity for players from all walks of life to come together and compete for life-changing money. After five days of thrilling poker and an electric atmosphere at the tables, we have reached the end of an incredible PSPC. Here, I am joined by PSPC 2019 champion Ramon Colias, tournament director Toby Stone, Senior Vice President of Casino Operations at Baja Mar Casino, John Zaremba. Table Game Shift Manager, Hugo Bethel. And finally, Head of Global Live Events Operations at Poker Stars, Cedric Below. Before we get to the trophy lift, just a few words from Cedric. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, everyone. I just want to take this chance to say a last quick word and a big, big, big thank you to all players who came here at the Bahamas, all players who tried to qualify for this PSPC over the last three years. It's been an amazing journey, two weeks of very intense poker with the PCA and our new champion of the PSPC. Thank you to all the staff, to all the media. Thank you to our partner, Bahama. It's been a fantastic event. It's been amazing three years again. So thank you, everyone. We hope to see most of you in Paris, but now it's time to, to celebrate Sasha. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cedric. This event had over 1,000 entries, generating a prize pool of almost $25 million. And now, just one player remains, walking away with a first place prize of $3.1 million. Please join me in congratulating our PSPC champion, Alexander Shulko. <laughs> One more time for Alexander. He deserves the applause for being able to lift that thing. And that concludes the PSPC and PCA 2023. For a full recap of today's action and everything that went down here in the Bahamas, check out the PokerStars blog. And of course, don't forget, the European Poker Tour 2023 is about to begin. First stop, Paris. And we will be there for five consecutive days of main event coverage. Make sure you join us from February the 22nd. We will be live on Twitch and YouTube with cards up coverage of the EPT Paris main event. Thank you so much for watching our 10 days of live coverage. We appreciate your support. Make sure you're with us later this month. But for now, from Joe Stapleton, Griffin Benger, Maria Ho, Scott Baumstein, Nick Walsh, and the entire PCA slash PSPC production team, I am James Hartigan saying good night from the Bahamas. Thank you for watching.
Of the mountain top. 